Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today I am pretty excited because we are doing a deep dive into one of the most popular mom cars out there and that is the Chevy Tahoe. And I've actually been driving this Chevy Tahoe for about a month now as a mom of three and I am ready to share my thoughts and compare this thing to my beloved Ford Expedition. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and families. I'm a mom of three and I'm a certified child passenger safety tech. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Now the Chevy Tahoe got redesigned in 2021 and it was a pretty significant redesign. I have been very mixed on if I've liked the redesigned look, but the more I see it on the roads, I do think that the front end is very attractive, especially compared to other cars in its class like the Ford Expedition. I love the Ford Expedition, but let's be honest, this Chevy Tahoe has more to look at. Now the Chevy Tahoe also got a facelift redesigned I don't really know what they're calling it, for 2025, and I actually went to Detroit to get an exclusive sneak peek at it. And while I am impressed with some of the tech upgrades, I want you to know that the functionality, the size, and the car seat setup all stayed the same. So this tour is going to be very relevant. We're really going to get into the nitty gritty of how this functions for a family. And this is relevant from 2021 end up. Now coming along to our side profile, the Chevy Tahoe is what we classify as a full size SUV. So it is bigger than cars in that midsize category, like the Traverse, the Palisade, the Atlas. This thing is bigger. Now you get a lot of that space in the driver's seat, in the second row, and in the third row, but not necessarily in the trunk space. And we'll be sure to talk about that soon. But for the most part, I think it's a nice side profile. It's a big car. It drives like a big car. You definitely feel like you're driving a truck. You're sitting very upright, but I actually really like how the Chevy Tahoe drives. And I think it's a better driving car than the Ford Expedition. It has a little bit more power. It has some better handling. So for that, I'm going to give a point to the Chevy Tahoe. Okay, and then here we have the back end of the Chevy Tahoe. Uh, this one is the RST trim level specifically. It's got a lot of nice sporty accent. It has a very dark tint on it. This is actually a used car. Did I mention that? This is a 2022, but again, relevant for 2021 and above. We love a tucked up wiper here. really cleans up the back end. I love the blacked out accents. And overall, I think it's a very attractive looking back end. But let's get into the driver's seat. Let's break down some of the mother's comfort features. And then we're going to dive into this car seat setup. Okay, here's a shot of me in the driver's seat of the Chevy Tahoe and let's start by breaking down the door panel. Some really nice cubby spaces. Uh, I mean like this is like super in the weeds but I did think the Ford Expeditions was a little bit better, a little bit bigger. I don't have like a great place for my Stanley. They're not quite as wide and deep as some other competitors but there's some other storage that we'll get to over here so don't worry. So let me get you over to the other side and we'll start breaking down some more of the features. Okay let's take a closer look at this interior. Now for 2025 all of this was an updated. We will link my full tour below. It was a good upgrade. It was a good necessary upgrade. However, I will say this screen is simple. It doesn't have a lot going on. It's basic. And I've actually really become fond of that because it is so user friendly. We of course have our Apple CarPlay Android Auto, but like I just love all of these buttons down here, making it so easy to adjust things. And it's so funny because if you listen to some of my older tours, I used to think this was too many buttons and I didn't like it and it felt cheap. And you know what? The older I get, the more I appreciate simplicity. And that's on growth, you guys. So I have found this very user friendly, especially after driving the Ford Expedition for a year and having the climate control built into the infotainment system. It was so annoying and so clunky and I missed a functional button. So I'm happy I have that back. Okay, some other things to note, the shifter. Up here, little tabs don't love. I like a down here. I like the circle. This I just feel like is a little, it's just not my favorite out of all the things. Not a deal breaker though. Steering wheel, steering wheel controls are very nice. I love my heated steering wheel, heated seats as well. I also have a USB-C and just a standard USB here and then a nice wireless charger also. We've got cup holders here and cup holders back here. These ones are smaller than these ones. I find that a little annoying. My Stanley does not fit great here. It fits good in here. A little area to, I guess, put a phone down. Okay, sorry, I kind of have a lot of junk in here, but it's actually a very nice sized center console with two more additional chargers. And I love that this car has both the uh, USB and the USB-C. Like, we need both in life because like my car pure uses the USB, my phone charger is the USB-C, and like I just like to have options. So like no matter what, no matter what phone charger someone brings, I can charge their car, charge their phone. Okay, 
let's get to the second row. We are going to break down this car seat setup. Okay, now possibly what you tuned in for is how well do car seats actually fit, and I don't think you'll be surprised to find out very well. Now, the Chevy Tahoe comes in both a bench seat and captain's chairs, and I am so excited because I have the bench seat, and I have never really been able to play around with the Chevy Tahoe bench, and like I was expecting, it's a very good three across candidate. However, it is very different than the Ford Expedition bench and honestly loses a lot of functionality, so I'll be sure to point out the differences. But let's start by looking at the car seat clearance. This is a Kleck Foomf car seat. I have the driver's seat set for myself at about six feet tall, and as you can see, I have plenty of clearance, so you are good as far as that's concerned. Now, my car seat setup for my kid is my daughter Hattie in the Kleck Foomf, my son George in this Kleck Foomf forward facing, and then my youngest Fred is in this Kleck Ling. He's literally at daycare though, which is why I don't have the base. But this bench is nice and wide and it can accommodate any three across option. Three boosters, three adults, three forward facing. It can truly do it all. Now, as far as the car seat hardware is concerned, in this bench seat, we have lower anchors in all seating positions and then tether anchors across the back. In the third row, still three seats, we have um, three tether anchors, no lower anchors, which is a huge missed op from GM because other vehicles in its class have lower anchors in the third row, and I would like to see those added. Okay, now this is a, what we call a 60-40 bench. What I like about the Ford Expedition better is the Ford Expedition bench has three separate seats that you can move independently. So it was my preference when I was driving the Ford Expedition, I was actually able to move this middle seat forward and kind of stagger my kids, which one made buckling a little bit easier. My kids couldn't touch each other as easily. I just kind of liked everything about it better. Um, but this is a 60-40 split. So this seat is independent from itself, but those two are connected. As you can see from the way I'm accessing this, we have the fold and flip. So no car seat friendly tilt, making it a little bit more difficult for third row access, especially with car seats. Um, but you know, they should add it. Okay, let's break down some of my second row amenities from a passenger's perspective. Okay, we've got two USB-Cs down there as well as heated seats and my own climate control. We also are going to find ceiling vents. We love ceiling vents in a car. I mean, look at my daughter's car seat, direct airflow. This is what I'm talking about. I would love to have seen vents also on the back of the center console, just so like we could have some more airflow back here. Cause by the time you add car seats, even if they're on the ceiling, we're always looking for airflow. So that feels like a missed stop, but we do have ceiling vents, which I love. No sunshades, again, missed stop. It's a family car, like let's get some sunshades in, but it is a very spacious second row. I'm next to this big convertible car seat. I have plenty of elbow room. I can easily buckle myself. Good head clearance, good knee clearance, and overall I'm very comfortable. Okay, here's a shot of me in the third row of the Chevy Tahoe. Third row is okay. It's so funny, on paper, these car, this compared to the Ford Expedition, they feel they are so similar in size, especially in the cabin space. I think the Expedition is bigger. I felt like the second row was bigger. I felt like this was bigger. So I don't know, you guys. I, it's, it's okay, I mean, I like that I still have ceiling vents. I have cup holders, USB-Cs on both sides. No middle head restraint, huge huge no-no for me because like now as an adult i can't sit in this seat i'm not protected from whiplash so i have to choose an outboard seat and that's really important to keep in mind when figuring out who's going to sit where if you guys do have the bench seat i would not put a child without a car seat in a seat without a headrest that's just just basic safety that's very disappointing that that's not added in this car to be honest with you um like i mentioned earlier no lower anchors it's okay it's just okay i feel a little tight it's like a little claustrophobic. I'm also not really a fan of exiting the third row. So let's, okay. So then I can, I almost got my feet. So then I can hit this button. Then I also have to pull this up. Just feels a little clunky. I mean, what, what I think is nice about the fold and flip is then it's like, a, it really opens everything up. So depending on who's getting in and out of the third row, that might be okay. But so often I just feel like there's like a seven year old back there and then like they can't do this and it just like makes things a little bit more difficult. So not my favorite third row access for ease of use, but it does create a nice wide aisle. Okay, now it is time to dive into the trunk space. Now, I feel like people are a little disappointed whenever they see the Chevy Tahoe Ford Expedition trunk, but you have to remember, sorry, this is our, it's fall in Missouri, we've got some leaves. You have to remember these are not the extended wheel-based version. So if you are needing more trunk space behind the third row, look at the Suburban, look at the Expedition Max, look at the Lincoln Navigator L, you are gonna need the extended wheel-based version. This trunk, honestly, very comparable to the size of the Chevy Traverse trunk. 
I believe they're about the same. The Traverse, honestly, might even be a little bit bigger, like 0.2 cubic feet bigger. So just know that's what you got. Now, the way that I've been utilizing this vehicle since I do have three kids is we have this third row completely back all the time. I love that. That's one of, and that's one of the reasons, cut. And that's one of the reasons I love a bench seat because then I can safely put down the third row. I don't throw out projectiles and I can just really throw whatever I need back here. But let's say you needed to use the third row. If you have the captain's chairs, if you have four kids, I want to try to put a stroller in here. So this is a Mockingbird stroller and it fits very nicely. Fits very nicely. Still some room for some groceries. Now, double bob, wagon, those might not quite be as easy to fit in here. Okay, let's lay this third row flat and get an idea of what we're working with. We have power. Oh, I have to hold it. Right. So there we go, you guys. I mean, with the third row down, you're talking truck bed status. Love. I'm loving all, I love all this trunk space. Very comparable in size to the Ford Expedition. And that's one of, the, like I said earlier, that's one of the reasons why I love utilizing the bench seat. Now, four kids, that's gonna complicate things. Then you're definitely gonna need Suburban Expedition Max. But for the most part, this has been working really well for me and my family. Do I like the Chevy Tahoe or Ford Expedition better? That's probably gonna be the question in the comments. Um, I like them for different reasons. I think the Ford Expedition is a lot more car seat friendly. You have the separate bench, you have um, the car seat friendly tilt, you have better ventilation, you've got lower anchors in the third row, you've got headrest. So like it has more car seat, friendliness and what i like about that in a vehicle is i feel like i can put my kids in multiple different places so like yes this combination works but like this is the only combination that would work for me in here so the fact that i could like have a ford expedition have different combinations i like that a little bit better however i think the chevy tahoe is a better looking car and a better driving car so does that not answer your question so it depends what's important to you i'm very excited about the 2025 upgrades of the tahoe specifically in the interior but i also think they really missed the boat on some updates, like not adding the middle header straight and like not adding the lower anchors. They added this weird camera that like doesn't show, you can go watch my tour to get some more information on it, but slightly disappointed in that refresh because I definitely have some pain points with this car that they did not address in 2025. But anyway, that's my tour, very thorough. Let me know in the comments below what questions you have about the Chevy Tahoe and what vehicle tour I should do next.